Hey everyone. So object detection and tracking are at the heart of many computer vision applications. Today, we'll explore these concepts using popular frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch. We'll also compare the runtime of them, and we'll take a look at a more basic fundamental form of performing object detection known as a horror cascade. This is video 18 out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. So first, let's start off with the horror cascades. Horror cascades are machine learning object detection methods that are often used to identify objects and images or videos. Our features are simple, rectangular patterns that can be very quickly computed in an image. What's particularly interesting is that they're actually used to capture the presence of oriented contrast between different regions in the image. Each HAR feature can be thought of as a single specialized detector that checks for the presence of specific image patterns, like edges or changes in texture. Now, there are roughly three basic types of HAR features. Edge features that look for edges in different orientations, Line features that look for lines by considering a line of pixels contrasted against neighboring lines. And finally, four rectangle features that are more complex and involve contrasting rectangular groups of pixels. So without further ado, let's go through some of this code and also look at the runtime that it takes to run one of these hard cascades. So when I click this, first we're going to import, as usual, CB2, and we're going to pull in that plot lib pyplot to make it a little bit easy, easier to visualize um, some of the code. This cell will capture and log the time that it takes to actually run this cell. And what we do is we actually take a pre-trained hard cascade that's been designed for face detections in this line. And it's actually, we're invoking this XML file called hard cascade frontal face default XML. We save it to the variable face cascade, and then I then pull in an image. This will be an image of myself that you can find on the open internet. And then what we do is we turn it to grayscale. From that, that grayscaled image of myself becomes an input here. And then I actually take the face cascade variable and then I call detect multi scale onto that face cascade. And so basically, I then pull the x, the y, the width, and the height in this faces algorithm and I draw a box around my face. So as we're now at video 18, you'll see after I run this cell that we're actually taking some of what we've learned in earlier classes, including how to draw boxes on top of imagery in order to render the following output. And it was pretty fast. You'll see that in this face hard cascade, um, in this grayscaled image of myself, you'll see that it only took about 262 milliseconds to run this entire cell. So again, there's nothing super fancy going on here, but fundamental computer vision algorithms. And again, the hot cascade is relatively old. I mean, it's over at least 10 years old. Um, it was able to run in literally under a second. So now we're gonna jump over to another element. Um, we're gonna now take a quick look at TensorFlow at SSD MobileNet V2. So first, let me tell you a little bit about TensorFlow's Object Detection API, which is a powerful tool for detecting objects and images. One of the key things that you want to understand is that there is a model known as SSD MobileNet V2 Coco from TensorFlow. Imagine a tool that could essentially swiftly identify objects in an image from a coffee mug on your desk to a zebra in the wild. At its core, the SSD MobileNet V2 Coco model combines two powerful concepts, SSD and MobileNet V2. SSD all is basically shorthand for the single shot multi-box detector, and it actually detects objects in a single forward pass of the network. Unlike other methods that have separate stages for generating region proposals and classifying them, SSD does it all at once, making it relatively fast and efficient. MobileNet V2, on the other hand, is a neural network architecture that's optimized for mobile and embedded devices. So it's meant to be lightweight, yet powerful. By using inverted residuals and a linear bottleneck, as you'll see in this graphic that we're putting up, it's more efficient without compromising most accuracy. Finally, in the name of this model that we're going to import, the COCO at SSD MobileNet V2 signifies that the model is trained on the COCO dataset, which is a large scale dataset for object detection, segmentation, and captioning. So why would you use SSD MobileNet V2 COCO? Well, it's kind of that sweet spot between speed and accuracy, and it makes it perfect for real time object detection, especially on devices with limited computational power. 
whether you're building a mobile app, flying a drone, or programming a robot, this model could be a game changer for you. So now below, I'm gonna actually show you some code that we use to run an experiment with this. So first we'll have a regular preamble where we import TensorFlow and TensorFlow Hub. And then what we do is we actually underline, we import the underlying label map for SSD MobileNet V2, which is occurring right here in this line here. Um, so I save it as the label map variable. This will be mostly useful because the outputs of these models typically will just output label one, two, three, four, five. The label map just then allows you to bind that and say, oh, hey, actually label one is a cow or label 17 could be some form of cat or bear or zebra. So now this is where the sort of um, the chunk of this code lies. We're going to time it like we did with the other. And you'll see we pulled in TensorFlow Hub in order for us to actually pull in this pre-trained model. So I'm not training a model from scratch. I'm literally just running it out of the box. All of this here is just loading and pre-processing the image. And you'll see that we're using TensorFlow input output to read the file of Star Bunny, our favorite mascot, and what's on my shirt. Um, we'll then convert that into an input tensor that can be accepted into um, the TensorFlow framework. And that's why we call model and pass as input the input tensor. You'll then see that we load it into NumPy array. And then this function um, is actually just diving deeply into how we can loop through each detection to draw a box over it. So I time all of this and we will basically run and perform object detections by outputting those detections and then drawing those boxes in this function that I wrote here, known as draw boxes, uh, onto the image. So without further ado, I will run this image. And you'll see that ran pretty fast. It took us, it looks like 6.82 seconds. And you'll see that, of course, it's not perfect. It's actually drawing a box and it thinks that this star bunny is a bear. Of course, now you have to realize that we were just running them all out of the box. So it did indeed detect the object, but for whatever reason, some of the features that are associated with in the SSD MobileNet V2 Coco model tend to, I guess, have drawn connections um, and observed underlying features that are more akin to that of a bear. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head whether or not this model actually has a rabbit as a possible class. But you'll see here that it also rendered a score of 0.21, guessing that this image was actually that of a bear. So, I mean, they're kind of mammals, right? I mean, they're close, but it's not, it's not perfect. Now we're going to jump into our third and different framework. This time we're going to use PyTorch, which has become more popular. Um, and we're going to try a different model. We're going to use the faster RCNN. So diving into PyTorch, it's another deep learning framework that also offers robust tools for object detection. And here we're actually going to discuss a different architecture available from the Torch Vision library, which is why we import this. What we're going to actually pull in, it differs from what we just discussed with TensorFlow. So instead, I want you to imagine that you have a digital eye that not only, see, that not only sees objects, but also understands what they are. So that's the magic of actually having a faster RCNN or faster recurrent convolutional neural network. Um, and it's also underscored with ResNet 50 FPN. This comes from Torch Vision, but first let's break down that architecture and take a look at this graphic that we put up for you. So at its heart, the model uses faster RCNN, which stands for Faster Region-Based Convolutional Neural Network. It's, it was one of the cutting edge techniques for object detection, and it innovates by introducing a region proposal network or RPN, instead of relying on external tools for proposing regions where objects could be, the RPN actually does that automatically, making object detection like literally faster. Likewise, the ResNet 50 in the name refers to the ResNet 50 backbone. ResNet, which stands short for um, residual network, introduces the concept of skip connections or shortcuts. And it does these skip connections or shortcuts to actually avoid the vanishing gradient problem in deep networks. And we'll dive into that in the intermediate class, um, but for now I want you to know that fact. And with 50 layers, this is actually deep enough for accuracy, 
for accurate performance and yet efficiency in real world application. And again, as I mentioned with FPN, um, you might be wondering what does that stand for? FPN stands for the Feature Pyramid Network. So traditional object detection often struggles with objects of varying sizes. But the Feature Pyramid Network, or FPN, addresses this by creating a multi-scale pyramid of features, ensuring that our model detects both the large elephant and the tiny ant in an image. So you would often choose faster RCNN or Resonant 50 FPN because it's a harmonious blend of speed, accuracy, and scalability. While other tools might excel in one area, this model strikes a sort of nice starting balance, making it a top choice for diverse object detection tasks in the world of computer vision. Um, essentially, it's a tool that you could use to truly see the bigger picture. So let's just jump right into this. I'm going to import my preamble of import statements. You'll see that we're pulling in Torch Vision and, Tor and PyTorch. Um, and you can ignore this sort of warning. It's just basically saying that that iProgress loader was not found. And here's the magic of it. Um, so you'll see that there's a similar structure to syntax, um, but it's a different uh, library. Again, we're pulling in Torch Vision. I'm basically invoking FasterRC and ResNet, which comes from the Torch Vision models library. And then I run inference by calling model eval. After that's done, I actually will um, then actually load my image of the star bunny. So again, same image. Uh, and then what we do is we'll actually just perform object detection. I run with torch.no underscore grad um, to basically say, hey, I'm going to simply run prediction and pass that image that I loaded here after pre-processing to my model, which occurs with model.eval. I then want to extract all of my predictions, and I want to be able to see those different boxes, labels, and scores. Uh, you'll notice that there will actually potentially be more than one output, and this will be interesting for a variety of reasons, but let's just jump right into it. So when I run this script, you'll notice that it was incredibly fast, and we already had actually four different classes. And the performance here was much faster. The wall time was only 1.9 seconds. Interestingly, we also detected four objects with that model. Depending on how, depending on the output, it either scored at the highest level, a bird, which is 0.87, the bear, similar to our other model in um, TensorFlow, which was 0.32 in this case, it also identified sports, which is a little confusing, and Apple, which is uh, 0.07. So all in all, this is telling us that, yeah, computer vision is not perfect. And again, we're just running this out of the box. However, were both models able to actually detect objects? Yes. Also, is there a trade-off between scale, performance, and speed? Also, yes. All while this isn't perfect, this tells us that Similarly to how a model is able to identify underlying patterns, we have to realize that a picture is worth a thousand words. And with those words, we actually are trying to parse it using these computer vision algorithms to better understand what is happening under the hood. Essentially, object detection is pivotal in computer vision. And now in this example, uh, you've seen how we can do this with hard cascades with TensorFlow and with PyTorch, and we even explored two different models um, on our famous Star Bunny. This is video 18 out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. By the end of the series, you'll be ready to learn more advanced concepts of AI and machine learning, which will allow you to elevate your career in tech and remain in demand on the job market. Thanks so much for watching all, and I hope you have a great day.